So today's lesson is on empowerment, as spoken before. But I'd like to um, begin with where I left off in May. Anybody remember what that was? <laughs> Compassion. I heard somebody say it out there. And then I'll move to empowerment. So whether you're a direct campfire survivor or not, you must begin where you are. Now that seems pretty obvious, doesn't it? Where else would you begin? But it's not beginning just where you are in your mind. It's beginning where you are in becoming aware of your state of mind and your state of heart. In other words, it's not a physical location. I'm talking about, you may not be sleeping right Matt, now, but that doesn't mean you are awake to your state of mind and state of heart. There's nobody here living in Chico, living in Butte County, who would not say we've gone through drama and trauma. And getting centered can be very difficult, yes? Yes. Yes, at times. It comes and it goes. It ebbs and it flows. So I want to begin the lesson reminding all of us to be compassionate and to hold compassion for ourselves and for those around us. I know I hear more sirens than ever before, and if you want to read the news, as we spoke about Virginia Beach, there is plenty to be compassionate about. Now, It's important that we, to become aware means to be come aware. What was the first word? To be. And I know in our society we tend to be, it tends to be doing. And sometimes we can frustrate ourselves by, what am I supposed to be doing? But we need to come back to the awareness of where you are. Deep breaths are never harmful. That may seem like a small cue, but it's actually a very big cue in being with where you are and then being compassionate. How many people are aware that there is a Campfire Long-Term Recovery Group? Okay, maybe half of you, maybe a little more. That Campfire Long-Term Recovery Group is to provide recovery support for all the communities affected by the campfire. Now, the, the nickname for that group is CFLTRG. I think we could have come up with a better acronym. <laughs> The Campfire Long-Term Recovery Group will provide coordinated management of long-term recovery and provide additional long-term assistance to the communities affected by the disaster. This will be accomplished through the establishment and maintenance of a network within and on behalf of faith-based, nonprofit, business, and other organizations and agencies, which will provide a coordinated recovery effort alongside the government. Now, it's funny that the government came up because you didn't know that that was there, right? You have to understand that it's not them. Whether I'm talking about the Campfire Long-Term Recovery Group, I always have to think about that, or whether we're talking about the government or whether we're talking about the housing agencies, or, it's not them. It is us. Remember, the, the message for today is empowerment. The Long-Term Recovery Group has a subcommittee called Spiritual and Emotional Well-Being. So what's that acronym? So, much better acronym. 
And uh, I want to thank Sharon Sauls, who's been uh, consistently, she's around here somewhere, consistently going to so. And uh, I've been inconsistently going to so. And it is beautiful when you walk in to see at least 30 representatives of all kinds of agencies networking and coming together and connecting with one another like never before. And I was there on Friday for a couple hours. I'll start with the bad news, which you all already know. There is not enough mental health support in the county based on the trauma experienced by so many in our community. Which, whether you were a resident of Paradise or one of those communities, or whether you um, live in Chico, we all know that. And there started to be some discussion amongst the SO group. They're fatigued because they're the caregivers. They're the people organizing. They're the people going places. And as you know, some caregivers don't know when they have overgiven or feel overwhelmed based on knowing all the need that is out there. So at one point I stood up, and I know you know this story, the little boy who's on the beach with a whole bunch of starfish, he picks one up, throws it into the ocean, and a man comes up and says, you can't possibly save all those starfish. The boy picks up the starfish, throws it into the ocean, and says, I just made a difference for that one. What about us? Can we make a difference for that one? So the good news is that there are so many of these groups coming together. I want to make sure to highlight, because I know we have uh, many artists and um, folks in the room who are healers. And I'm just going to give some examples, but again, there's a plethora. And if there's any problem with SO or the Campfire Long-Term Recovery Group, it's getting all the information out and connected. And we're working on that. But the City of Chico Arts Commission is teaming up to gather information and support for those who do arts. They are looking for arts and culture in recovery. They want to know those individuals who are interested or can lead arts and art forms for people. Why? It heals. It brings you into the present moment when you're expressing your art. Right? It transforms, exactly. Inspiring, empowering, and transforming. That is our Center for Spiritual Living motto. Um, there's Cal Hope here who is working in the schools. Uh, Paradise continues to have events and the Spiritual and Emotional Well-Being Committee will continue to honor the anniversary of the campfire and continue to connect community to community so that people can find the resources they need. Is this empowering? Is this inspiring? So, do you think the Center for Spiritual, Ch Spir Center for Spiritual Living Chico has a role to play in healing our community? So what are you actively doing? <laughs> Don't burn yourself out, Sharon. <laughs> I, it's a question for you to contemplate. We as a center are actively doing a couple things. The first is many of you know that since January we've offered holistic healing service every second and fourth Saturday. And I want to thank the healers who've been offering their services. Sherry Lyon Coyle has been doing biofeedback. Sharon Sauls has been doing trauma support. Vicki and Al Lopes have been doing Reiki. Matt Cavender has been doing mindful movements. Practitioners have been doing spiritual sessions. Leanne Lipscomb is also Reiki and doing resonance repattering. I might have not said that right. I'm sorry, Leanne. We're going to get you a workshop here. Pat Rue has been um, greeting folks at the door and helping them sign up for multiple sessions with each of our healers. There are healers that have come and gone. I don't know if many of you remember Oz. She's no longer in Chico, but she was a great um, uh, energy in getting this started for us. And um, I want to ask you to please continue to spread the word. 
And we will have more flyers out for you to take those small flyers and distribute. People who have come have said it was very helpful for them. They have said they walked out feeling better. And maybe even with some kind of tool to help them get connected to their being after their trauma. Like the starfish. We made a difference for that one. I'm still working on Landmark. That's just a longer process, but I'm working on that. But I'm very excited to share with you our next offering during the month of June to help all of us in Butte County, if you're willing to um, take it up. Starting this Friday night at 7 p.m., we're offering a free workshop and an introduction to tran Transcendental Meditation to help people get regulated, centered, grounded, and frankly, to restore all of our mental health. Have you found yourself frustrated, angry, confused? In advance, I'd like to thank Bob Dillon. Bob is the Transcendental Meditation Certified Teacher willing to come to the center of the campfire. He will, I'll speak a little bit more to Transcendental Meditation in a second, but he will be with us in the social hour and he will be um, have a key to the center because he will be hosting many Transcendental Meditation se sessions here. He's been teaching Transcendental Meditation for decades. He's got a lot of experience, so I hope you'll ask him questions. And um, I, I really, again, want to thank you, Bob, for coming and being willing to offer the skills um, to help us here in Butte County. Now, yeah. Now, we're a spiritual center, and many of us know about meditation. But many of you may have friends and family who don't have a religious or spiritual tradition. And I want to say to you, in that case, Transcendental Meditation is a psychological tool. Okay, So you may hear me go back and forth. We, we all know it's one. But for those who prefer um, not to look at, quote unquote, spiritual tools, but still need tools uh, to balance, to become into life balance, Transcendental Meditation is that tool. It's been scientifically studied by the National Institute of Health and similar organizations, PhDs, to significantly improve the symptoms of PTSD. The Department of Defense funded a study that shows Transcendental Meditation significantly reduces PTSD symptoms in veterans. <laughs> It has, science, uh, Transcendental Meditation has scientifically proven to relieve symptoms of trauma, anxiety, depression. It improves memory and self-awareness, and it builds a healthier heart. It has shown to increase the use of your brain reserves, as in there are parts of your brain that you don't necessarily use. It actually allows you to expand that, increase self-actualization, increase focus, and reduce high blood pressure. It's endorsed by the American Heart Association and the Veterans Administration. Bob has been working hard in the background. He's got a few national scientists interested in studying the impact of transcendental meditation on campfire survivors. He's worked with the David Lynch Foundation to make scholarships available to those directly affected by the campfire. These scientists are interested in bringing more transcendental me meditation to places of natural to disaster to assist people with personal resiliency for those that have been affected. I I'm very proud to be bringing this here. And I hope that one of the things that you would be willing to do for the Center for Spiritual Living and yourself is to distribute flyers and let people know the availability of transcendental meditation. So I, you, you're getting ahead of me. That's okay. I have small quarter-sized flyers out on the table where we have our activities. 
and I ask you to take a few of those. There is a mistake. It does start at 7 p.m. on Friday, and it goes till the 28th of, of June because the 28th is a Friday. You can come any Friday. Not every Friday. It's just any Friday. And you get the free workshop, and you get an introduction to Transcendental Meditation. If you decide to go on from there, Bob will guide you, and the sessions will be hosted here, as well as other places, because he's also connected to Gridley and Orville and the people who've gone to other places. If you're still not interested, <laughs> neuroscience has shown that 50-year-olds can have the brains of 25-year-olds if they sit quietly and do nothing for 15 minutes a day. <laughs> now I may get your attention. <laughs> 50-year-old? I dare you. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, since we're in a spiritual domain, I'm going to say to you, this is a spiritual practice with high impact. I was a meditator for many years before Transcendental Meditation. But I have to tell you, still to this day, it's not like in my control, but as I do my meditation, I all of a sudden find my body just move into a deeper state of relaxation. My breath and my body, I just feel it shift. And you just, it's sort of like being on the mountaintop. You just sort of see things a little differently as you create that time for yourself. It's a way to love yourself. It's a way to be compassionate with yourself. It is a spiritual practice. Which is a perfect time to talk about empowerment and empowering yourself. Empowerment is the authority or the power given to someone to do something. So perhaps someone empowers you to go beyond your current state. Empowerment is also the process of becoming stronger and more confident, especially in controlling one's life and claiming one's rights. Now I sort of have argument with that definition because especially in controlling one's life, we're in control of life, right? From the bigger perspective, we know that's not true. We like to think we're in charge of life, and we like to think we know better. Even though we know there's a lot of things we don't know, which is frankly where your learning and growth happens. So when the energy and experience in our lives start to change, which they have for Butte County, maybe they have for you personally, and, and or you start to get uncomfortable or get stagnant in life, and you keep holding on, like hanging on to a ski rope when you fell off your water ski. <laughs> it's funny how we won't let go when life is saying, let go! We know intellectually that change is the only constant, but we don't act like that. Why? Do we trust life? Can we let go and see what else life has to offer us? Can we know that, the, that and can we imagine that there's something different, something better? Oh, but I'm comfortable right where I'm at. We can only be empowered if we're willing to think and act and trust life beyond the current circumstances. Got to get beyond that rut. Got to get beyond those habits. And we can grow in trust in the divine life, higher self, whatever you choose to call your universal source. Every time we allow something to <clears throat> blow apart, what we are fearfully, traditionally, unconsciously, or uncomfortably trying to hold together.
So, many of you know, in April I shared that my life was hitting a few bumps when my partner Sue broke her leg, and my employer told me I needed to move down to Long Beach by September 3rd in order to keep my job. Life just blew apart. <laughs> it's an opportunity. <laughs> Let go. Let go. Trust. I actually had people asking me, how are you handling this? As if they were looking for the drama and the story behind it. Because that's what we do, don't we? Yeah. We tell our story, then we embellish our story. We keep telling our story based on our human experience, not the spiritual domain. And you know, when we tell our story and embellish our story and continue to buy into that human story, it becomes disempowering. Now, this is not to say, don't feel what you feel. That goes to the very beginning of this lesson of, you must first become aware of your state of mind and your state of heart. You can only begin with where you are. And when you become aware that you're angry or frustrated or upset or... Yes, then comes the, I just need to be with that. Because thinking that you're just going to do a bunch of other things and then it's going to go away only continues to just let the garbage sit at the bottom of the garbage can. It will come back. <laughs> Stinky as ever. <laughs> so, for my story, I kept trying to make the story shorter. No, I'm not going to Long Beach. <laughs> and I kept imagining that I was in a boat floating down the river of life. The river keeps going. Sometimes you hit rapids, yeah. But life will move me forward and carry me forward, and I trust that. I did my spiritual practice. I'm rowing my boat and acting in places where I can serve, I serve. And when I need to be home being, I'm being. So today, Sue's not only back on her feet, but she took her bike around the uh, Bidwell Park. When she came back, she was, you know, delirious. Yay! <laughs> for those of you who know my partner, she's a triathlete. So for her to um, be, you know, back at it was such a good, vibrant feeling. And that was fun, right? And um, I am feeling empowered. I have some things on the fishing pole. And I hope to have some news to share in the next couple of weeks regarding my job. So remember... In order to empower yourself, you really need to remember that the presence of spirit, your higher self, is always with you, is always with you because it is you. It's your, yes, the presence of spirit is always with you because it is you. The only thing missing is that you forget that. Meaning, you know, as I do my spiritual practice, oh yes, come back into I am one with all that is, and what does that mean to me, and what does that feel like, and to get behind that, and then remember, uh, oh yeah, that's always been here, I just wasn't aware of it. It doesn't go anywhere, we go somewhere. So say, I am a center for spiritual living. I am a center for spiritual living. With unlimited possibilities before me. With unlimited possibilities before me. So our motto here has always been for the last uh, three years, inspiring, empowering, and transforming. Our vision is we inspire and empower people to live their spiritual magnificence, transforming our world through unity, love, joy, peace, and wisdom. 
And I'd like to add specifically, and compassion. Our mission is we provide spiritual education and tools and practices that uplift hearts, expand minds, and transform lives for a better world. Are we doing that? Are you doing that? Because you are the center for spiritual living. We are offering science of mind classes, holistic healing, holistic healing services, spiritual mind treatment in order to empower you. And all of these things are demonstrating us living our mission. I hope that you will partake and become empowered. Namaste. Thank <laughs> you.